What's going on YouTube? Back again with another video. Okay, so today I thought I'd give you a, a quick look at my uh, A600 or my Amiga 600 computer. You've obviously seen the uh, A4000 and my A500, but uh, this is the, the Amiga that kind of sits in my games room and uh, I use for uh, playing games when I'm in the games room. So I thought I'd uh, give you a bit of a tour of this particular machine, what's under the hood and, and everything like that. And um, yeah, so uh, let's just jump, jump straight into it. So the Amiga 600 uh, was the last, one of the last Amigas to come out. It had come out around the same time as the A1200, but it's, it's the successor to the Amiga 500. Um, and when it first came out, it wasn't, um, wasn't received very well, I guess you could say. Uh, people were kind of a little bit annoyed that um, they they had taken what they call shortcuts in order to um, get this thing out the door and as far as the upgrades go from an Amiga 500 there really wasn't much um, you did get one megabytes of chip memory um, in the box or out, or out of the box I should say uh, as opposed to the 512k but the Amiga 500 plus uh, also came with one megabyte of chip RAM out of the box too so it had the one megabyte of chip RAM, the Motorola 68000, of course, and the clock speed was not any faster. It was still clocked at 7.14 megahertz, and uh, obviously smaller form factor, and uh, you know some some shortcuts and some some fairly kind of at the time at least uh, puzzling kind of design decisions. Not least the uh, PCM CIA port that's on the left hand side here, but as we'll as so uh, moving around the particular unit on the right hand side we've got the standard floppy drive here and uh, we've got the mouse and joystick adapters fairly fairly standard stuff i mean that's what you normally get on an a500 and an a1200 um, and on the back just moving around here we've got the uh floppy drive connector and that's to that's to add a an external floppy drive if we wanted to do that there's a rs232 serial port and then we have the uh parallel port for connecting up printers and stuff the audio ports left and right and this is the video the rgb connection and uh, we've also got a composite out and this is the connection for the rf modulator and the power connector which is standard um, so a, uh, an Amiga 500 uh, power supply will, will work and fit into this particular model as well and power it on and that's exactly the same as the A1200 and as mentioned on the left hand side uh, we don't have any other expansion ports except for the PC PCMCIA port which again is uh, very very handy these days for particular add-ons that um, have been made for the Amiga specifically things like um, network adapters, compact flash, memory and um, stuff like that. So let's uh, crack open the machine and take a look in the internals and I'll show you some of the expansions that I've got going on in this particular machine. Be right back. All right back again I finally got the uh, keyboard uh, pulled off the top basically we've also got a connector down here which indicates the power and um, for the LEDs that uh, that uh, on the keyboard itself. So this is what we've got under the hood. So the first thing you'll notice is we've got this floppy drive here, which is, um, it's a refurbished uh, internal floppy disk drive from Amiga kit. Um, it's a uh, new old stock or whatever you call it, uh, works great. Um, the A600, and as you can see, it's very, very small and there's a lot of stuff going on in here. So I'll just walk through things as we go. Uh, on the left here, this is the PCMCIA connection. So basically your PCMCIA cards will slot straight in internally like that, and that will establish a connection. We've got the Kickstart 3.1, and that is from Amiga Kit, of course. We've got the uh, four gigabyte compact flash drive, and this is plugged into the IDE connection port, as we mentioned previously. Now, as mentioned in the old days, you would have a, you could add a 20 or a 40 gig, sorry, a 20 or a 40 meg IDE hard drive into your Amigas. And some of them came standard internally. Um, and in this day and age, everyone uses compact flash. And, I, and this is no exception. I've got the four gig compact flash 
card in there and that's got classic workbench and all the WHD load and all that fun stuff so that's that and then underneath the compact flash card we have and let me just uh, pull this over here this is the ACA 620EC and this is a 16 or a 17 megahertz 68020 expansion accelerator card and um, this is a really really uh, nice piece of kit to have it's pretty cheap on Amiga kit and individual computers I think it goes for around a hundred bucks maybe it's a little bit more than that maybe 120 bucks I'm not sure but um, it gives you a, an 020 processor it gives you I believe and I, I gotta look at the specs again but I believe it's up to 10 megs of additional fast memory um, so it's a it's really awesome to have it's it's great for WHD load and playing games and things like that now obviously it's not anywhere near as fast as a 030 or you know 40 megahertz 030 040 060 class processors but um, if you want uh, a nice little boost in your performance and you have an a600 I strongly recommend picking up one of these uh, in fact I would almost you know, question why you wouldn't because uh, these things are just totally awesome to have. It gives you extra memory and it gives you a faster processor. So, um, you know, it's it's win-win across the board. And this thing plugs directly into the 68000 slot. Um, so if I actually pull this out, um, as you can see, uh, here's the 68000 CPU, the, the default one. And this is the accelerator and just snaps directly into the 68000 port and it basically uh, hijacks or not hijacks It's probably not the right word, but just takes over the the that particular um, memory bus and address space and um, Uses the 68020 chip which is on board which um, I believe is this chip over here which uh, has uh, its label crossed out of course and uh, the memory's on board as well so that's the ACA 620EC accelerator and it just snaps back into the 68000 port and there's also a jumper to disable it if you need to do that as well um, you know you could hang a switch on the case or something if you want to switch between 68000 mode and 020 mode so again, another awesome piece of equipment by individual computers. And then we've got the trapdoor, trapdoor expansion and we've got another couple of upgrades here. Uh, we've got the uh, A604N, which is um, the chip RAM upgrade. So this basically will give us an additional one mega chip RAM and bring this machine up to two megabytes of chip RAM, which is the maximum amount of chip memory that you can have in an Amiga computer. So uh, we've got the chip RAM upgrade as well. And um, there's also uh, a couple of uh, real-time clock ports that, um, are, uh, that are uh, available as part of this expansion as well. And um, you can also add things like um, the individual computer's uh, rapid road USB um, and use that against on the clock port. And I've actually done that with uh, a rapid road that I had previously uh, and that works totally fine. So you can also include a USB style expansion um, in an Amiga 600, it's pretty cool stuff. Um, now there's obviously a ton of other expansions you can do in, a, in your in a Amiga 600. Um, there's a couple of guys on the, I believe the uh, Amy Bay forums that have done some just amazing upgrades. You know, they've, they've packed in all sorts of stuff under the case and it's, it's, it's you know, I've, I've seen things like 030 accelerators and sound card devices, um, the rapid road stuff. I mean, just crammed in a whole bunch of stuff, and uh, it's just unbelievable seeing some of the the uh, upgrades and enhancements people have done. But um, for me personally, I'm pretty happy with this. We've got the uh, compact flash, of course. You know, every Amiga in this day and age should have a compact flash accelerator expansion. Uh, or hard drive. Um, we've got the O2 accelerator, we've got the Kickstart 3.1 upgrade, and we've got the chip RAM upgrade, and that's all I really need um, for this particular Amiga. This is, again, this is just for playing games, and this is um, something that I use in the game room. But what I want to do now is uh, put this all back together, connect it up, and um, I'll show you a couple of games and show you the system and uh, do a couple of benchmarks and see, see it perform in action. So I'll be right back. 
So we're back again, now we've got the A600 turned on and connected up to the Commodore 1084S monitor and this is connected via RGB of course. And as you can see we've got the classic workbench going on here, we've got the 2 mega chip memory and the 10 mega fast memory. And uh, we'll just give you a quick walk around of the particular system itself. Um, first thing that we always do here is just do some kind of a sysinfo to show you what we got going on under the hood but if we click on uh, I think it's benchmark that should tell us what we need to know that's not the one I want but um, we can go into uh, sysinfo here and that will give you some information as you can see uh, well it thinks it's a it's one of these machines it's not really sure which one it is but it's got the 68020 at 16 megahertz there's no floating point unit no FPU in this particular machine it's an ECS chipset OS 3.1. We've got the 2 megs of chip memory and the 10.8 mega fast memory, PAL, and um, just the 60 hertz and all that fun stuff. Here's the individual computer's expansion, which is the. Uh, and do a sysinfo, of course, and let's do the traditional speed test on sysinfo. Which incidentally isn't, isn't a particularly accurate um, benchmarking tool, but everyone seems to use it. So uh, let's kind of just walk through it. We've got the Kickstart 3.1 here and uh, all the resident pro, uh, libraries are loaded into fast memory, of course, to give us uh, an extra speed boost. We're at 3,300 dry stones and um, in comparison, we're uh, 6.29 times faster than an A600 at 7 megahertz. Now remember we've got the uh, 68020 clocked at 18 megahertz here. And we've got the 2 megs of chip memory. And uh, so yeah, we, we've, set, we've got the accelerator card in there and uh, we're a bit faster than the, well we're 4 times faster than the 2000. 2.7 times faster than a A1200. Um, now that's without any fast memory. I think with fast memory, the A1200 would uh, come out to be a lot faster. Um, the A2500 or 2500 at uh, 02 at 14 megahertz, it's just a little faster than that, 1.61 times faster. And uh, the 030 um, grade accelerators, as you can see, we're slower at 0.71 of a 680025 A3000 and uh, 0.18 time of uh, the performance of a A4000 68040 clocked at 25 megahertz. Um, but in and of itself, it's a nippy little machine. It's great for gaming, great for WHD load, and uh, yeah, pretty cool stuff there. Um, if we go to our drives, this is our compact flash drive, of course, and um, that's the one I wanted, I'm sorry. That's the compact flash drive, and then do a speed test, and. We're about 1.6 uh, meg per second, which is about standard. Um, you can get IDE buffered um, ex speed ups and, and things like that, third party add-ons or third party hardware that will give you better IDE performance. But um, yeah, there's no real need for that. For and of course, uh, it wouldn't be a uh, demonstration of an Amiga without a WHD load demo. So uh, this is iGame loading up now on the uh, A600 and um, I've got all the WHD load games installed so it takes a little bit for the uh, launcher to come up because I think we've got something like two and a half thousand on here um, but let's give you a, a demo of uh, something that's running and um, probably uh, let's pick something that uh, takes advantage of an accelerator so let's take a look at something like Frontier type setup especially with that many games um, but in, in any case uh, as you can see compare that to an A500 uh, it runs quite nicely the, the 3D vectors and this is running a little fast because we're in NTC mode so I think the music is a little faster than normal I guess The vectors obviously run quite smooth. Still a little jerky in some places. It's certainly not sort of silky smooth like the 030 type setup, but um, certainly very, very playable and uh, obviously much better than the 68000 version. And uh, of course, 
being WHD load, uh, it's easier to quit out. But the problem is, with WHD load, there are some keys that are mapped to the keypad, which um, doesn't exist. And I think this is one particular game that uh, has that has that problem. I think it's mapped to. I didn't actually pay attention, but it's probably mapped to number lock or uh, or help or something like that. I, unfortunately, I, I'm not able to quit. It. Now, one of the other things I wanted to show you was uh, Tiny Launcher. Now, I've got Tiny Launcher um, in my startup on my, I think it's my right mouse button click, but we'll just show you from here. And uh, I use this in the games room. Basically, it's a easy way to get your Amiga up and running without really getting into Workbench first. And uh, it's just a cool way of loading games quickly. Um, so this is basically a front end, I guess, for WHD load. and um, gives you the ability to quickly load up your games. So it's very, very handy without actually having to load, load into Workbench. Uh, you have to set it all up, of course, and provide the paths of where all your games live, but um, very, very cool stuff. And I think uh, the guy that actually wrote this, his name is Tony Gibbs or Gibbs, I believe. And um, so yeah, credit to him. Uh, it's a really, really awesome launcher. I use it all the time, especially in the games room where I don't really want to mess around with using a mouse to run around or to navigate to the uh, games folder um, and, and run what I want. I just basically use this. I can use, you can use the keyboard to navigate or a joystick and uh, it's just uh, very, very handy to do that. Yeah, there guys, that's, uh, that's the A600 up close and personal. Thanks very much. And uh, we will catch you again in another video. Bye for now.